The smell of narwastu, the smell of alabasa is like that. All right, so we fly back from Egypt, go to America with a lot of Egyptians, expensive looking ladies, Egyptians, Coptics, mostly, you know, coming here, they are most of their Christians, like this is Coptic sign here, Egyptian. They smell alabasa. They smell perfume, narwastu. Wedding, birth, death, all type of important event, they use this expensive perfume. The Bible said a good name is better than the expensive perfume. King Tut was discovered. When they discovered the, 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 the graveyard of the, uh, the King Tut, they find out inside this tomb, there's 3,500 years bottles of Narwasta, of Alabasta. When they open it, exactly the same smell like today. No changes for 3,500 years. Expensive? Yes. But the Bible said, good name is better than the perfume. So now the question is, what is a good name? Everybody wants a good name. Good name is reputation is number five. Everybody wants to have a good name. Everyone to be want to be respected. So there is a term here that we can a good name. You can you can protect. A good name comes from the protective character. Protect your character. A good name will follow you. A good name is not coming from just you have a rich richness or good name you just come from your good looking or your positions. Good name come from your character. So now I'm talking about what is character? Character only can be built. So people said there is actually three names in your life. Number one, first name is the name that given by your parents. Number two is the name that given by other people. Parents give the name, other people they also give the name. Another name is acquired by yourself. You have to build yourself for a good name. But this good name, you cannot just use that for your outward things. The good name only comes from your good character. I'm going to quote you something here. Michael Joseph's son said this. I'm going to read it slowly. Character is the moral strength to do the right things even when it costs more than you want to pay. Character is the moral strength to do the right thing even if it costs more than you want to pay. So, after that he said this word. Watch your thoughts. They lead to attitudes. Right? Watch your attitudes. They will lead you to words. Watch your words. They lead to actions. Watch your actions. They lead to habits. Watch your habits. They lead to character. So at the end of someone is the character. Well, they will be respected or not respected. It's all built from now. You young people, you want to say, hey, I want to be rich? No. I want to be rich in character, Christ-like character. When you die, when you're old, getting old, people know that person is amazing person because inside you. Okay, that's number one. A good name is better than a character. A uh, good name is better than a perfume. Alright, now, B. Funeral home is better than a party home. The day of the death, the day of death is better than the day of birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than go to the house of feasting. For this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. I tell you the truth, actually, as a, as a minister, as a pastor, 
I already go to many, many, many funerals. I can see from a baby die to the old man die. I can see people just die that day and go to the funeral home. Or people already sick for a long time and pass away. I can see a lot. One time in Jakarta, we have a funeral right there, finished funeral, and a family came to our church members and said, Pastor, they, they talked to the Bhakta Vidaya, uh, Pastor Ben, is it possible if you help us to close my father's coffin? Now we are there. That place, there's a coffin still open. And the family came and said, Is that not for long? Skeleton put And said, Who are you? What church are you from? Oh, I'm from Unchak uh, Sangkhoi. So why is the pastor or the pastor cannot come? Keep postponing, he don't come to the funeral. So we were there, and now we are talking about what should we do? Should we go there? And come there? All the people are been waiting for a week just to close the coffin. So finally we go there, and I look inside this dead man. It's all dried up. As a pastor, you can see a lot of situations with dead people. I tell you the truth. Honestly, I prefer to go to the wedding party, not to the funeral. I prefer to go to a birthday party. I prefer to go to the, to the buffet place to eat. But the Bible said here, it's better to go to the funeral. What is going on? Okay, I'm going to show you something else. That this altar, the King Solomon said this, A glad heart made a cheerful face, but a sorrow of heart the spirit is crossed. He said, the same altar said that. All the days of afflicted are evils, but the cheerful of heart has a continual face from a But the verses that we read today here, sorrow is better than laughter, sadness of the face and the heart is made glad. The heart of a wise, we are talking about wisdom in this retreat, is in the house of the morning, but the heart of fools is in the house, house, house of mother. So now the question is, what is going on? With these verses. Well, interpretation today. Maybe Solomon is getting older now. Maybe Solomon is getting wiser now. He wrote Proverbs, he wrote Ecclesiastes. Maybe he's thinking right now, you know, he gave all these Proverbs for you to live a life. But now he's writing this book. For you to pre prepare for your death. Now, comparisons. The birth and the death. The birth is for you to face the world. The death is for you to face God. It's more serious. The birth is helping you thinking about your emotions, your intellectual, your social, your life. But the death is Helping you thinking about your soul. What are you going to do with your spirit, your soul? The birth year is giving you a name, but the death is getting you a reward coming up. The birth year is seeking pleasure, career, comfort, good life, but the death is seeking God's face. Well, I think, my interpretation, Solomon is getting better. That's why he said, going to the mom, going to the funeral home is better because you go there and you think about the whole life that you have to face right now. Make the right, right choice and decisions. Well, I'm going to let you read this verse here. Psalm 90, 9 to 12. The years of our lives are 70, or even the reason of strength 80. Yet the span is but the span is but for the trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. It is better that's it. 
Psalm 90 is very clear talking about our very, very short life. I'm not, I'm not sure whether you heard this name of Elizabeth Kuber Ross, a Swiss American psychiatrist that wrote a book on death and dying. On death and dying. He wrote this five stage of people that get news from the doctors that they have cancers and they're going to live for a few months, a few years. But two months ago, my very good friends that we started Solid Indonesian Church together suddenly got a very, very bad news that he got a leukemia cancer. So he is in the ICU, so we went there and then he said this to me, Pastor Lydia, I never thought that I'm going to get this kind of things. Okay, we prayed, we encouraged him, and then after that, two more weeks, he passed away. Very fast, he passed away. So when I was thinking about that, you know, when he's, he got the news that he is in a very difficult situation, according to Elizabeth Cooper Rose, denial is not me. And then anger, why me? And then bargaining, God, if you heal me, I'm going to do something. If you heal me, I'm going to give this. If you heal me, I'm going to do that and this. But to the poor is desperations or depressions. Now, my life is getting shorter. I'm going to leave this world, how about my family, how about my home, how about my careers, depression too. At the end, is acceptance. So, Elizabeth Cooper Ross said, when you got the news about situation with your health, denial, anger, bargaining, depressions, and acceptance. But according to the Bible here, only one stage. It's not five stage. According to the Bible here, just be ready. Only one stage. You are young, be ready. You are old, be ready. You are just a believer, be ready. After you follow Jesus Christ for 40 years, be ready. Because one day, we will be going home. Understand that kind of things is better. This is the second point. First point, your reputations, your good name is important. Second, second point, going to the funeral to remind you about your life is short is also a wisdom. Now, number three, you need to see. The third wisdom, better wisdom. Scoldings of the wise is better than the song of a fool. It is better for a man, the man to hear a rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of the fool. Well, I'm not sure. Have you ever been rebuked or scolded by someone that very wise, also very loved? These persons love you enough to scold you. Well, what is your reaction? Maybe your, your reaction is, I'm not very happy because who are you to tell me? I'm not very happy because do you know who I am? Or the another reaction is, you thank him or thank her that love you and rebuke you. Well, this is my experience. 1975, I was junior high. Don't care about my, you know, just junior high, you know, just playing game and not very serious about studying. So this very learning person that saw me living this kind of style of life suddenly called me and said, okay, is it possible you come to my place? I need to talk to you. It's my cousin. She, she, she's a, maybe some of you know, uh, Mary Do, Dr. Mary Do, some of the, you know, uh, professor in Singapore by the college. <coughs> so she said, I want to tell you something. You are smart, but you are very lazy. At first I said, okay, are you all finished? I need to go to do other things. I said, hold on, on. I need to tell you. Okay. Don't be like this, don't be like that. You have to plan for your future. And then she talked to me about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I go to my room. My thought, my attitude is totally changed. 
since 1975, I have this mind, I have this heart. I want to be a better person fighting because that kind of things, that kind of advice give me life, give me new attitude, give me new thoughts, give me new motivations, give me new directions. It's amazingly changed. I become more mature persons in my life. I become hopeful, I become more stable, I become better self-esteem. So the Bible here said, better for man to hear a rebuke from a wise than to hear a song of a fool. Mark Twain said this word, never argue with a fool on lookers may not be able to tell the difference. If you want to argue, if you want to get advice, don't talk to the foolish people. Talk to the smart people, wise people, because you can get a changing of life. Number four. Ending is better than starting. A better is the end of a thing than its beginning. What do you think? Ending is better than beginning. Should be philosophy of everyone. When I was in college, uh, I had to write a, a, a paper to graduate. So in the college, either you are a bachelor in Indonesia, you have to write a paper. So I made a Sastra English uh, uh, a letter, they call it the English literature. So I was picking the book that the theme, they said, okay, this book is very thin, but you have to write it to do the paper to graduate. So I chose this book titled The Old Man and the Sea by the Ernest Hemingway. I'm not sure whether you read this book. It's a story about this old man that for 38 days without catching any fish. Now, on the 35th day, he went out to the sea and started to fish. And suddenly, he got a big, big fish, Marty. And this fish here, okay, according to the story that you know, uh, this, this uh, Hemingway told, okay, this big fish here is the record Marty fish. 14 in, 14 feet, 6 inches, kira kira 4 and a half meters. But the book here, in this, the old man in the sea, the money that they caught is 5.5 meters, it's bigger than this. Now, the story starts. He got this big money, and according to the story, the old man in the sea, the money draw him out to the sea for two days, two nights. Come on, Marlene, I want to kill you, but you are too big. And the Marlene go away for two days and two nights. So this fisherman, San Diego, Santiago, talking to the fish, the fish become his friends, also his enemy, talking to the fish, fish, come on, I'm going to need you, let's go home, you are too, too old. And then talking to himself and talking to the fish for two nights and two days, because the fish drag him out. Finally, after two days, fighting with the, the, the fish, the fish got tired, he got tired, now the fish gets close to him. So he tied this 5.5 long meters fish to his small skip boat and they go home. On the way home, according to the story, the woman and the sea, the sharks start coming and start eating all his fish. Coming back after the third day, to his home, all the meat are gone because of the shark eating them. <coughs> now, he is too tired after two and half day, three days, five the fish. He go home and sleep. While he was sleeping, some tourists come and say, Wow, look at this big shark. They thought it's a shark. But only his friends know this is not shark, this is Marlin. No more meat, only spew in the head. And he, he tried to help him clean, clean the boat, clean the, everything, because Santiago is too tired. With nothing else, 
he slipped there, after he awake, he said, Okay, friends, this meat for you, just take it. You start difficult. To maintain is more difficult. To end is the most difficult. You start any ministry, it's easier. It's difficult, but easier to maintain. You want to start a church? You want to start a company? You want to start everything? If you have money, you have a, a, a group to, to do it with you? It's relatively easy. You want to make this company, make this church healthy, make the ministry successful? It's relatively easy. It's not, it's not, it's not easier compared to the, the end. At the end, to finish everything just like this Santiago, Giving the head with a little bit meat to his friends is expression of thanksgiving and humanism. So when I read this, when I finish this, all the teachers ask the whole class, "What do you think about this book and these illustrations? Do you think this kind of man, this kind of persons that wrote this kind of book, is going to be strong and able can commit a suicide?" So everybody in my class during the time in Surabaya, Petra, said this kind of person, Ernest Hemingway, is not going to kill himself. Only me said this person's pastor is going to kill himself. You know what happened? Ernest Hemingway killed himself. After I wrote this book, the thing, the man in the sea, he got a Nobel Prize because of this book. And then after that, he killed himself. So I was thinking, at the end, what are you going to do? When you get old, when you're going to face God, inside of you, who are you? Who is in you? I think you maybe agree with something like this. The sweetest person in the world, my experience, is the Elders, older elders, the elderly persons is the sweetest persons in the world. But I also find out the meanest persons, the most dissatisfying, unhappy persons in the world is also the elderly. The older people, seniors, they are the most sweet, happy, content persons. But also the meanest persons, not happy persons, also the elders. So what is the difference? One is the persons that feel uh, feeling fulfilled, feeling secure, feeling accepted, and have done the best. The other are despair, insecure, rejected, and regrets after regrets. Paul said what? Second Timothy, people said, how possible is the Paul's the last book, Second Timothy. So now I'm going to show you this, the Paul said this. I fought a good fight. I finished the race and I kept the faith. What is the last verse of the Second Timothy he wrote? Yeah. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be to you. The last chapter of the last book, the last verse, Paul said, The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. But well, brothers and sisters, as a believers, as a Christians, as a people that know Jesus Christ personally, what I hope, I hope you have this concept. To begin is good, easy. But to end is difficult, but it's going to be better. It's going to be good. It's a better wisdom to know that at the end you will say, The Lord be with you, and the grace of the Lord be with you also and me. Now it's good and good. Last part. Patience is better than pride. The five wisdom that we learn today. Patience is better than Christ. Be quick, be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for any lodgers in your heart of 
home. Say not required the former days are better than this, for this is not from wisdom that you ask this. Patience is better than Christ. We talk about patience, you know, patience we know is a God's character. You know, patience is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, patience is learning from very young how to control your anger. Patience is now, the another term for the patience is long suffering. It's difficult, it's not easy, but you know that you need to be patient. The you know, prideful spirit is a human sin. Prideful persons will think like this. I'm the best. Prideful person will, will think like, I'm very good. Prideful persons will think that, why you criticize me? Because you know, I already done my best. Prideful persons in the heart may be, may be of persons of lack of insecurity. So talking about ministries, talking about at the church setting, you know, you always want to work together with a humble person. You always want to work together as a team, as a person that make, make you feel you can learn something from them. You know, patience is better than pride, because pride is sinful. Patience is godly character. Somebody will say these words. Thinking about pets bring tears. Thinking about the future bring fears. Thinking about the presence bring cheers. When I read these kind of words, I say, well, what the Bible said, why are my former days better than this? What is the connection? Well, if you are, your past bring tears, your future bring fears, it's impossible for you to bring cheers today. It's nothing to hope for. It's nothing there. So, the Bible said, why were the former day better than this? My understanding, maybe the former days is full of prideful spirits. You don't learn some things. That's why when you get old, you feel regrets after regrets. Well, this is the verse that probably I want to let you know. Better. Thinking about the past brings joys. Thinking about the future brings hope. Thinking about the present brings thankfulness. So there's a quote that says this I have seen yesterday. I am not afraid of tomorrow. And I love today. Well, only you that have somebody bigger than you inside that can say this kind of words. I have seen yesterday because the Lord is with me. I am not afraid of tomorrow because the Lord is still with me. And I love today because the Lord is with me. So every time in the church, if you say, the Lord will be with you, what is the meaning? Meaning is the peace of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, the grace of the Lord is be with you. You can carry everywhere. If I say to you, why my teenagers is better than me now? And why my high school days and my friends are much better than my family now? And why my college years are better than my entire life now? Well, if you think that, because maybe when you were young, you are very prideful, you don't know something. Now, as you learn today, you are going to learn more in coming sessions. Ask the Lord, Lord, help me to not only open my mind to understand, but open my heart to accept and believe. Not only help me to see with my eyes and hear, but also help me to see with my heart and hear your word. So today we learn something. Number one, a good name is better than expensive perfumes. Number two, 
funeral home is better than a party home. Number three, we learn scolding of the wise and the person that love you is better than a song of a fool. Ending is better than study. Patient spirit is better than a proudful spirit. Now, the last part. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. An advance to those who see the sun. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. And the advance of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. Well, I hope this Ecclesiast that you know, Solomon wrote when he is getting old can help us. Protect your wisdom. Protect your character. Today we learn from Argus, Jesus, knowing Jesus, is the walk. Wisdom of humankind. And then at the end, we need to learn also actually Jesus is our wisdom. Okay, the song that we sing today, thank you for singing this song, Jesus is the song. So, is it possible if we sing one more time? I know it's still early. After that, we have time to, to be discussed. Is it possible? Let's sing one more time this song. Yeah. When you, when you read the Timurasi Patariya, we read. When you did this song, you know, in my heart, I said, okay, thank you, Lord, for reminding me again about this song. Because this song here uh, has a special place in my heart. When I was ministry in Arlington, Texas, this song became our songs of evangelism, our song of education, and a lot of song of reminding Can I leave? Beside the camera. Let's sing together this song.
let's make it turn in spirit. I need to tell you my story. And my story is this. My Savior is the Lord and He has control of me. He loves me and He pays me see. He gives His song to me. And everybody said, Jesus. Okay? Let's tell me your story. Okay? Not only sing the word, oh, that's His Savior. It's not my Savior. It's all of my Lord. Jesus, I don't know. But I think He's a good man. No. He comes to my word and dries my tears. He gives me strength to face my fears. Saint, tell me the story. This is retreat. Okay? Sing one more time. Then you're like. Tell me a story. My Savior is the Lord. So we have uh, a bit more time until 6 o'clock for uh, question and answer. Um, we'll try to make the best out of this time. If we have lots of questions, we'll try to finish at 6. Um, if not, we can end early. Uh, although, um, we'll talk about timeliness because we sort of uh, ended our lunch pretty late and we started pretty late as well. So if we can have dinner more timely for one hour from six till seven, so we can come back here at this place, uh, well, for the adults here at this place and for the youth, it will be downstairs. Um, because then we'll have our game night. And since we have asked the, uh, 
I guess Fadi, I, I'm not sure what his uh, role here is, but I guess he does everything. Uh, we've asked him to keep the lights on until 11. So, since we want to uh, get our most fun out of our family night, right? Let's be timely, finish our meals, and be back here at 7. So for now, we'll start our Q&A. If anyone has any questions, please raise your hands. Come Johannes, I will ask you to um, moderate the conversation. Thank you so much. So, this is a time for tests whether you are sleeping, you are taking a nap, or whether you are actually, you know, like, uh, 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 attention for that, you know, the circle just now. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not doing the circle, I just, you know, ask the ask to be the, the, the uh, model. Uh, we have this room, we have three pastors, Pastor Elijah. Pastor Agus, Pastor John, yeah. we have pastor, two pastors. So, in case you have had any, you know, any question from that, the five level is then and we can raise this question. I, 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 I just make it regular. The first round, if someone wants to ask right now, please raise your hand. Then I would like that way, you know, get the question. Is there any question? Any comment? Any not disagree comment or something else? No? Andre? You would like that in the game? No. No? no? Still lowering. I, I, I just asked him that. No. Right now it's a 550. Am I right? Yes. Still again. Yeah. No question, so it means that you know you pass. Oh wait, you pass, but there's another, another, another possibility. You pass or you ignore it. Or drink this. Oh, the fine boy. The fine boy. Oh. Yang mendapatkan dan true 
Yes, the parents is the source of the leadership, wisdom, humbleness for the children. So we as parents become the very important, crucial, especially in this kind of years, the role models for kids. So the kids can grow strong or weak, uh, wise or not wise. All depends on how we transfer the godly wisdom the life that we live to the children. So the children go out, see all this kind of philosophy outside, with yes or no, homosexual, or you know, all these kind of the issues. They say, well, at home, there's another better wisdom. And this wisdom not only to help you to think, but to help you to live. Because really they say, okay, we face the philosophy to, to, to change your mind, to make you accept all this kind of philosophy. But my parents tell me the godly wisdom that we learn from the Bible is totally different. And I think we like that. Because that is the source for the kids. The Rikichiya from the very young, the Rikichiya Anak, so the Mugerti Dharma Belajar Bapak. Saya punya cucu yang ketiga. Saya menggendong dia, baru dua bulan, mamanya lewat sambil bicara, langsung dia cari president home. That is two months old baby, listening to the voice of the mother, reaction, where is my mother? So, from the very young, anak-anak itu sudah echo the heart of the parents. So, if the parents, all the generations learn, not only to practice that at the church, but bring home to feed, feed, and I at feeding, feeding the soul of the kids. Yes, the kids grow up and say to the parents, Papa, Mama, thank you. Not the teachers, thank you, but Papa, Mama, your wisdom, your lifestyle, your sentence, role models. Yes, banyak anak-anak muda waktu papa mama ni sudah tulis surat kepada papa mama, papa mama, thank you so much because you already teach us now. Yeah, thank you. Nah, itu bagi orang tua is the biggest comfort mungkin melihat anak-anaknya sukses. Of course, the questions anak-anak muda bisa dapat wisdom. Yes, from the Bible, from the reading, the teaching, from Pastors, pastors, see pastors strong or not strong in the witness, in the strength and others. Yes, the process. Many of the pelajaran yang kita belajar, the process of faithfulness, God used that as a goal. Jadi goal, jadi tujuannya. Actually, faithfulness, so you can reach the goal. But God said, no, the faithfulness is your goal. Masuklah kamu yang setia. The faithful servant, tapi the faithful is the process. But God made that as a goal. Yeah, so teaching wisdom, that's a lot. Yeah, we can learn from the Bible. Today, why are we five? Well, we can have a group. And children can learn? Yes. Pak Agus, mau tambah? Masuk Jim? Sharing there, someone. I like 
studied about two, 20 years ago. About 20 years ago. Yes. So, about 18 years ago, we started the Indonesian church in Karasbo, in Kerry also. We uh, named that the Solidio Indonesian church. Yeah. So, start from my house, and then we have a prayer meeting for a few months, and then uh, we get the funding from the Baptist church, and then we start Ada yang di Baptis, pertama kali orang Baptis in the Pangkernan di all the Pangkernan people they said, who is that guy? And then, that's okay. and then God led this church to develop. I am I'm not a pastor anymore because another pastor came. I went to New York, another pastor came. So God gave them a meeting to start relatively easy. Okay, mari kumpul, kita barbecue, kita ada acara, kita barbecue study, main piano, nyanyi, mengincilan, dan sebagainya. Okay, relatively easy. To maintain, kadang-kadang sampai satu taraf, ada jemaat yang mana, Pastor, we are moving to another church. We are out, kerana aku sungguh, not happy with your style of leadership. Enough. It's hard. It's painful. You know, I was standing in the lobby and somebody said, Pastor, next week we are moving. Terus orang-orang lain mengatakan, idea bagaimana ini keluarga aktif di gereja, moving out. Wah, saya mau tahan dong. Sesudah satu waktu, bulan juga. Jadi, wah itu susah. Itu sulit sekali. Karena masa-masanya adalah kita baru gereja, mau bangun, sebanyak orang datang kalau bisa. To maintain is relatively more difficult than to start. Now, at the end, pastor atau orang yang melayani, bagaimana? Ini gereja sudah punya gedung. Is my effort? Is that person's effort? That person's money giving? Wah, kasih kredit dong. Ini bahaya ini. Destructive behavior and philosophy. Kalau kasih kredit ke mereka, because the whole process from the beginning to the maintaining to the end of the church is all God, nothing man. Nah, itu yang terjadi. Kalau misalnya kita solidium belum belum penting, masih bisa develop. All the churches, the healthy church, they can develop and grow. But the pastors that serve or the leaders that serve, after everything, we pray, pray for me, pray for me. For God to tell me as a pastor, said all glory to God. How about you pastors that start this church? I pray, I hope God gives me this wisdom to say, it's not me, all because of God. Jadi saya belajar dari sejak di Jakarta, ada orang yang suka mengatakan, wah, Elia, hebat ya gini ya, hebat begitu ya. Waktu saya muda, saya terima. Wah, berarti saya sukses. Saya sekolah di Amerika, pulang, dapat semuanya, I go to America, get everything, I know, I'm successful with this. Then I started to realize, my goodness, I take the glory of God to myself. Now I'm in danger. In dangers of losing my ministry because when you're prideful, you are sinful. It was it. Kalau sombong itu dosa. So I developed this idea. Maybe right or not, I don't know. But I developed an idea. I have a 45 angles mirror in front of me. Di dalam hati saya, saya kasih 45 derajat. Jadi kalau orang muji, saya pasang mirror saya. Maksudnya apa? You say something, but belongs to God, right? Body part, protective window screen. I'm not saying that. Jadi saya mulai develop, hopefully I develop that more and more in my heart. Okay, it's right there. You want to say something good about me? That's fine. Say it, but I'm protected. All glory to God. So, session four in this retreat, 
getting stuck about that. The value of the ministry, the B, number one, is all glory to God. Jadi itu bayaran untuk akhir saya harap sampai terakhir kalau saya sudah dipanggil Tuhan mau selesai dipanggil Tuhan. I say, Lord, I'm coming home. I'll go there to you. Apa yang sudah saya lakukan, just give me. Because of you, not because of me. Because of you, I hope this is the wisdom from the Lord. So anyway, that's all. Just fantastic. Anyone else? Any any other questions? <clears throat> Or do you want me to pick you? Oh, there it is. Fantastic.
crisis, the sufferings and hardships are the points where you learn to, uh, yeah, you learn what is wrong, what is false, what is, uh, what you need to avoid and what you need to apply and how you apply and so on. So yeah, sufferings, unfortunately, are necessary in, uh, in our uh, growth of wisdom. Uh, now, for a person who is ordinary, regular person, living in North America, here in Canada, pretty affluently and um, does not face a lot of challenges that often the third world or other countries or other sovereign countries would face. That, you know, how, do we, how, do, how, how can they grow uh, wisdom in the environment? Well, first of all, if your life is so smooth, then perhaps you have to uh, reflect yourself and wonder if you're actually, you know, if your life is actually the wrong going in the wrong direction, first of all. Um, because I think being a Christian, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, whether you like it or not, I think the hardships will come. So it's the fact that you are a Christian. Now, we may not face the same kind of the sufferings and hardships that we face in some other countries, where just simply being a Christian means uh, a severe persecution. It may even mean a death penalty in some countries, right? So we may, not, we may not have that kind of a challenges here, but here even in Canada, I mean, most of us experience when we talk with our friends or neighbors, or go to workplaces, or go to schools, and so on, that um, expressing your faith, Christian faith, is not an easy thing, and we'll face a lot of resistance, a lot of, uh, a lot of pushbacks, uh, a lot of insults, perhaps, uh, rejections. Um, that's a part of the challenges that we all, we all have to face as a Christian. And, and also, um, living a Christian life involves sacrifice or giving up uh, your privileges, uh, sometimes your wealth, sometimes your lifestyle, sometimes uh, even your time or different things for the sake of, of the greater cause, uh, which includes sharing the gospel, or um, perhaps uh, uh, missions and so on that you, you have to sacrifice. So, yeah, so sometimes uh, when you uh, have a, such a good and easy life, you might want to reflect your thought and say, what am I missing here? <laughs> uh, why am I being, why am I having such an easy life? Now, we, have, we, we can be thankful for what we're experiencing, but at the same time, maybe that can be that can be a point where you can reflect and say, maybe I can, I can do more. Maybe I can give more. I can, I can serve uh, people. Um, sometimes I, for some of the young people, I used to tell them just go to downtown soup kitchen or homeless shelter or go uh, mission, like go to mission fields. Like you don't have to like do something in the mission trip, but like at least go and just at least see for yourself and that will help us to gain a perspective and also I think that also helps us to realize how we can contribute. So for those who are wealthy, those who are more privileged, you know, we can perhaps, like, maybe we don't experience the same kind of degree of hardship and persecution as those who live in poverty or less fortunate, but maybe we can participate in their sufferings by joining in and giving up and sacrificing our own and, and, and joining in their sufferings and by doing so that we can also grow our wisdom. I mean, I, I learned more in serving in poverty or going to the, uh, some of the more, less fortunate countries than sometimes just simply coming to the church every Sunday and worshiping and never experiencing any real kind of challenge or threat or, or persecution. So, so I hope that answers something.
they are not humble, they don't learn. <coughs> if you're suffering and humble yourself, then you learn. If they don't humble, they become insecurity and they become pregnant. It's nothing to learn. Plus, if people are smooth in their life, everything is smooth, but they are humble enough, then they learn something. Tapi kalau semuanya smooth, dilancar semua, kaya semua, but they are prideful, they still no wisdom in their life. So, if you say everyone suffer, get a wisdom, no. But everyone suffer, humble themselves and learn to get wisdom, yes. Yeah, a lot of people, after they suffering, they become less wise. <coughs> Sudah menderita, kok makin tidak bijaksana ini Pak? Ada yang suffer, and then getting wiser, learn acceptance, trust, faith, strong. Itu aja Pak.
So, um, name in the Bible um, is more than a name, often. Uh, we see in Abraham, Sarah, Jacob, and all these names that we see mean more than simply names. Uh, in Jewish in Jewish culture, like name, like as the pastor earlier pointed out, name it actually name it actually represents that person's character. So actually, in the Jewish family, sometimes they wait for even a year or two until they actually name their baby, because they want to see what kind of baby, what kind of character does the baby have, and they want to name that baby correctly according to that baby's so the child's character or personality. They want to see that personality or character that, that this child has. So good names, I believe, is not just the name, but it's, it's, it's that person's character and person's, uh, yeah, person's virtues and values and so on. Um, so in a sense, it is, in a sense, yes, reputation, but it is different in the sense that it's about that person's character, virtue, and value. So, so sometimes we can have a good character as a Christian. That doesn't necessarily mean that we have a good reputation in the world because of our Christian faith. So one good example is like Daniel. Daniel has a great character, a great virtue at the same time. For others around him, his reputation was bad because he was a Jew. He worshipped the God of Israel only. And for others, that is, uh, and, 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 and there was a lot of jealousy and envy and so on. That they were mocking and they were, they were accusing uh, Daniel. Uh, so for us Christians, it's not necessarily a reputation in the society, but, but truly it comes down to how God sees us, what God sees us, and what God, and eventually, you know, we'll, we'll see over and over again, you know, like for instance, Jacob, God renamed him Israel because that's who he is now, that his character before was a Jacob, a father of Cheer, but then, then he became Israel, you know, the, the one who fought with God, the one who wrestled with God. Right? So, so in that sense, you know, you know, for us as a Christian, it's, it's about who we are before God, and and that's that's more important than than the wealth that the perfume represents or 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 what it shows. So. Like for that woman who pours the, the perfume on Jesus, you know, for her, it's more about what God has done for her and how she wants to express herself to God, to Jesus, and what she owns as wealth. So, and and Jesus follows that. And amazingly, you know, Jesus says that what she has done will be shared uh, as the gospel goes out. So, so she really.
good question actually it is because it's so but to give my short answer here, um, yeah, that's where the wisdom comes in, that's right, first of all. Um, when we're in the when we're in the persecution, we're in the suffering or the temptations, that's where the wisdom is in the fire. I'm trying to remember the question here. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, uh, we're living in a very Thank you.